Four-year-old Haley Okines is in Florida for the annual Progeria reunion. 32 children are arriving from across the world out of just 40 known cases of this rare aging disease. It was sunny all week. I thought the airplane touched down at the wrong country. I really can't believe it, but we're having a good time all the same. It's not dampening anything down so far. The first stop is the Outback Steakhouse. Three quarters of the world's known progeria cases are in the room. The reunion has been running for 20 years, and this extraordinary gathering is a good story for the local press. One sufferer with an even rarer form of the disease has been to every reunion. Greg is 32, outliving all of his progeria friends. There's a new family from Denmark. I think there's a new family from Korea. Um, I haven't really spoken to them yet, but I'll be getting round to them before the end of the week. I know a lot of progeria kids live to go to Sunshine Reunion. And it's nice for them just to walk in and just see 30 odd kids with no hair or with bandanas on that all look sort of pretty much the same. And I know Hayley really looks forward to going. Hayley, look, chicken and chips. Okay. As well as a party for the children to enjoy, the parents value the opportunity to share their experiences of new treatments. We're always talking about what treatments they're on, if there's any different treatments about, um, maybe we can try them at home or find out from the doctors at home whether there's anything new we can have a go at. Look out. <laughs> I've noticed a couple of kids this year have stiffened up quite a lot on their joints, which is one thing we're keeping an eye on with Hayley because she's been complaining about hip pains and uh, her knees as well, especially after she's been running about a lot. We're talking about different things we can put on them, like treatments for their arthritis and stuff like that. Next, a fun park for disadvantaged children, where even the local bikers lend a hand by offering rides. The reunion is an opportunity for specialists to see how the progeria syndrome is developing in Haley and her friends. The syndrome has um, features that lead to these children all looking very similar. The children don't have much body fat. They have more prominent foreheads and more receding jawline. And this leads to them looking very similar to each other, especially when they are advanced in age. But the course of progeria can be quite different from child to child. I look at some of the other kids, like, a similar age to her, and I think that she looks pretty good. She does look good. She does look very healthy. She is a very healthy child. So at the moment, she's only got sort of trouble with her joints. Her heart's in pretty good shape. All right, good one. Good job. You ready? All right. Groovy. I like that. That's happy. With better weather the next day, the families head out early to the hotel pool. But the happy scene is overshadowed by tragic news. We got in the pool quite early this morning, about 8 o'clock, I think. About 10 o'clock we went in to uh, get a drink. Somebody told us that Greg had been taken in hospital. About a couple of minutes later, someone else came up and told us that he, he died. And uh, it was a bit of a shock, but uh, uh, I don't know what to say, really. It was a bit of a shock but it was expected. Every year we come to a reunion and we're not expecting to see him. And uh, there was talk about calling off the reunion. There was some people saying, I think everybody ought to go home. And I talked to a couple of the other families and they said, uh, no, I don't think Greg would have wanted that, especially looking at what he did yesterday up at the Sunshine Village and some of the photos I saw of him. I don't think Greg would have wanted that to happen. The last day before you go home, you say goodbye to everybody. You don't know who's going to be there next year. It happens every year. Um, I don't know. 
it's, 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 you just got to do it, you know. It's just something that you know is going to happen. You just don't know who it's going to be. You don't know what kid it's going to be. You don't know how old they're going to be. All the families have to cope with the knowledge that progeria is terminal. But all agree that they must carry on with a reunion and hide their shock for the sake of their children. First thing I do is um, I look around and see what parents are having a rough time and I'll try and go and find their kids and go and kick a ball about with them or throw them in the pool or something. That's what I try to do. Um, the kids, especially ones her age, don't understand. The adults know. The kids want to just play. You, you can't spoil the week of the, that the kids are having because of something like that. And so we all started throwing balls at each other in the pool afterwards. And that just about done the job, I think. The TV news is here, and Haley has become quite a celebrity. Uh -huh, yeah. But like a Hollywood film star, she finds the media circus a bit of a drag. You're very pretty, Haley. You've made a lot of friends. Oh, it's just me here, the kids just have a ball. It's just one big party for a week. You know, it's like, all the kids look forward to it every year. <laughs> she is so beautiful. Where'd you get those glasses? <laughs> Did Daddy buy you those glasses? No. Who's are they? You don't know. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> Back in Britain, and summer is drawing to a close. It's time to focus on Haley's big day, starting school. The family are out shopping for a school uniform, but it's always a struggle to find clothes that will fit Haley's tiny frame. We're gonna get stuff for your school today, can we? Oh, that's not bad, Mark. That's not too bad, is it? I'm going down to my legs. Down to your knees? We can tuck it in though, can't we? Yeah, we can tuck it in. Yeah? Okay. Five to six year old stuff doesn't fit her. Which they is... don't get like school stuff, doesn't go down to like, she needs like two to three, maybe three to four year old. So this is the problem we have. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. To prepare Haley for questions or teasing at school, Mark and Kerry have started to explain progeria to her. She knows she has progeria. Um, she doesn't know exactly what it is. I mean, she doesn't. Mm. I don't know, she knows what's going to happen. But we've always been open with her. If she asks questions, then we answer it as honestly and you know as much as we know. We'll tell her about it. She's only four, so you've got to be a bit careful, tactful, and put it in like child's language. But she always says, when she gets older and she's going to lose her progeria, she can grow hair. Or when she gets older and loses her progeria, she can be tall like a big sister. Oh, dear, dear me, now you're going to look like a moon, moon man with them on, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? That's the same thing, isn't it? That's still too wide. Yeah, it's still too wide. Thank you, do up a bit time. As with many rare diseases, scientific advances with progeria have been slow. But the recent genome project, mapping every gene in the human body, offers some hope. We have cloned the progeria gene already. It's in the human genome database somewhere. We have to find a way of pulling out that progeria gene from the mass of data. It's a lot like hunting a serial killer. You know the killer is out there, but you don't know what he looks like. With only 40 known cases, progeria has not been a high priority for medical research. But today, with people living longer than ever, research into the aging process might benefit children like Haley. You're not <laughs> Sometimes I feel annoyed that they should be looking into it more, but at the end of the day, they're not going to go and throw millions and millions of pounds or dollars at something that's affecting just a handful of people when they've got millions of people dying of AIDS and stuff like that. It, it makes me a little bit angry that maybe they should be doing it, but I can understand why. Yeah, gorgeous fit. Gorgeous, they are gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. It's the morning of Haley's first day at school. 
Three months have passed since the open day. But physically, Hayley has aged by the equivalent of two years. Do you want to do lunchbox first? Yeah. yeah. Chocolate spread sandwich. Packet crisps. Pink panther biscuits. Lunch fingers. There you go. All right. It's yeah. heavy. Heavy. Got it? It's heavy. Oh. Ready, smile. <laughs> Hayley, what sort of things do you think you're going to do on your first day? Writing? Yeah. What do you want to learn how to write? Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs? Cats and dogs. I was excited this morning. When she started putting her uniform on, that's when she sort of think, oh, we're really going to school now, big school. So, we put her to bed early last night and she shouts out, Mummy, I can't sleep. <laughs> Didn't you? There you go, okay, then. then. Now she's made to school, that's a big milestone. Um, now we look forward to, like, um, is she going to finish school? Will she ever go to secondary school? Um, will she be one of the unlucky ones that doesn't live very long? This is the start of a new chapter in the family's life. For Hayley, it's a rite of passage. For Mark and Kerry, it's a leap of faith. From now on, they'll be entrusting part of Hayley's life to someone else. See you later. I'm pretty out like you're right. <laughs>